All right, what is up, YouTube? How's it going, everybody? I am officially back. And before we get into the build video for Update 41 Sorcerer, a.k.a. Maxork, I am just going to give a quick recap. Um, I was... I have been gone for about four months now uh, due to some health problems. Um, unfortunately, I've been dealing with cancer treatments um, for the better month, the better amount of four months now. And uh, just we'll do a quick little recap of it. Um, here's me after my surgery. And unfortunately, I did have a uh, tumor that needed to be operated. And uh, it was not pretty. It was um, pretty bad. And uh, they had to take about 11 inches out of my leg to skin graft. Um, and about 3 inches wide. Which, this is still healing. This is still uh, a pain in my ass. But don't worry. I'm back in health. I'm feeling good again. Doctors are very um, happy with the way things are looking. And I'm feeling better. So... To get into the Sork build, let's do it. Um, first of all, Max Mag Sork is absolutely busted. It's extremely fun to play. It's super strong. It's got incredible survivability and burst all in one. And uh, in my opinion, it is one of the easiest things to play in the game right now. It's even easier than DK is to play. And... Uh, you might uh, disagree with that. Maybe you agree, but I main DK, so I feel like my opinion is uh, well respected in the terms of that statement. That being said, <clears throat> there's got to be like 10 different ways to build Sork right now for max magic builds, and they're all really fucking good. Like, you literally can't go wrong with max mag Sork. You can build it in so many different ways, and it is just so damn good right now. So, I'll showcase my favorite ways. Um, we'll start with the traditional tried and true, like, range Sork style build. And that would be this here. You got your Crafty Alfeek on the front bar, and your Rally Cry on the back. Uh, I started out playing like this. And I quickly learned that Rally Cry on the back bar is a really bad idea. It does not proc well. It doesn't feel right. It's just... It has a low uptime. If you manage it very, very well, you get like a 60-65% uptime. It's just not good. H highly recommend do not run Rally Cry on the back bar on Sork right now. Unless you run shield on your back bar, and if you're running shield on the back bar, you're not playing Sork properly. <laughs> let's, just, let's just be honest. You need streak and, and shield on your front bar. It increases your survivability rate by tenfold, and it's extremely important. So, um, you can call crushing weapon elemental weapon. This is normally elemental weapon. I just uh, swapped it for some testing pur purposes to run Mage's Wrath, and I really do like this setup here in both Cyrodiil and Battlegrounds, and it's even pretty good in 1v1. So, the first build we're going to go over is your tried and true Lightning Staff on the front bar, Crafty Alfeek, and Wretched Vitality. You got your Death Dealer feet, all Arcane Jewelry, all Weapon Damage. Um... This, this should really be an in-pen piece. You should run six pieces in-pen. I've just not got around to swapping it. So you got your Mighty Chudin. All Max Mag Enchants. All in-pen. <clears throat> your Crafty Alfeek. Rich Vitality. And then your Trainee. Now the Trainee is the one piece that's reinforced. Everything else should be in-pen. And I am in one medium, one heavy and five light. This is your standard lightning staff meta kind of play style. You can run crushing shock if you if you want to. Crushing shock is great in Cyrodiil. I do think it's a little better in Cyrodiil than elemental weapon, but in 1v1 and in battlegrounds, I prefer elemental weapon or crushing weapon if you want to run mage's wrath in the back. Which is a really good execute. It's a ton of actually AOE damage. It it feels like a ranged whirlwind. 
Um, and it could just blow people up from downtown. It's extremely, uh, extremely good. So that's your traditional um, kind of max magic lightning staff style build. Now, if you're playing by yourself and nobody else is with you, then Rally Cry on the front bar is a little bit better all around. It's a little bit better damage, a little bit better survivability because the crit resist. And it's even a little bit better in terms of overall, like... I mean, your max magic is lower, so your shield is going to be a little bit lower. But because of the crit resist and everything, it evens out and your damage is a little better. Um, so, if you're playing by yourself, Rally Cry, Wretched Vitality, Death Dealer, and Chudin, uh, I would recommend this. If you're in a small scale group and somebody else has Rally Cry, which I usually am in Cyrodiil, Crafty Elfique is the uh, obvious uh, better choice. So, that's your Lightning Staff style build. Right, we're going to try and speed this up quickly because I want to show you guys a lot of footage too. Now, uh, just to quickly get in, we have a bow variant for a max magic sword. So this is the same thing as lightning staff. You're just swapping out your spammable for focus aim. <clears throat> and same setup. You can do mage's wrath also on the back bar or even negate if you're playing with your with a group and you don't need a rally cry. Now, like I said, same same principle. You can swap to rally cry on the front bar. It is a little better damage. It is a little bit better overall for survivability. Um, it is the recommended if you're playing by yourself and nobody else is giving you the Rally Cry buff. Which I also have versions of it just for 1v1 for like messing around with the... Uh, I got the Rally Cry on it too for 1v1, which it is better. In 1v1, uh, Rally Cry is better, hands down, uh, than in Crafty Elfique. And then... To cap off, the other two of my favorite builds is Melee Sork. Now, you've got the... This is a 1v1 build here. Rally Cry and Essence Thief, Death Dealer, Chudin. Now you're swapping S, uh, Retro Vitality on the back bar for Essence Thief instead. Because your sustain is so damn good from the two-hander that you just don't need Retro Vitality. It's not even... It's not necessary. And you don't even need Sugar Skulls for this either. I run by stat food instead for this build. So you got the Rally Cry version and the Crafty Alfiga version. Rally Cry, once again, it is better for playing by yourself. Hands down, no question about it. And then this, uh, you've got the dual wield version. Crafty Alfiga, Retro Vitality, Death Dealer. Crafty Alfiga, Retro Vitality, Sea Serpent Coil. And I'll get into whose builds these are, but... This is a Rune Prison style setup. It functions better than Streak. And Sea Serpent Coil is definitely the way to run the dual wield build. Um, now if you're doing BGs, swap it for the Death Dealer feat. And swap your spammable to Mage's Wrath. I found this to be the best uh, to proc your frags along with like just hitting shield and streak. And the burst combo of just curse and frag together with the Mage's Wrath already on them, these two can crit together for a total of like, you know, between 22 to 25,000 damage if they both crit in Battlegrounds. And then the Mage's Wrath just blows them up and finishes it off. Um, we got some footage. Uh, maybe we'll get into that footage too, but... I am not going to take credit for any of these builds here. This is Lewis's build, a.k.a. Grey Hamster. Um... He's been playing it for about six months now. He gave me the build. I put it together. I tried it out. Extremely good. Probably the best 1v1 build in the game right now. Not even joking. Like, it is that good in 1v1. This is Monk's melee build. It's a bit of a meme, kind of. But it's really fun to play. And it has a 100 to 0 capability. And you will see Monk out here killing pretty much everybody with this build. Um... It's that good. But you gotta get your timing right, and you can use the Vampire Spammable if you want. I found that it feels better with Endless Fury, the other morph of this, because it hits a little harder single target. Uh, both are really fun to play, really good. 
I do not recommend the two-hand build in Battlegrounds or in Cyrodiil. It's great in 1v1, but that's about it. It's really not that good in Battlegrounds. It's not that good in Cyrodiil. There's better options. The dual wield build is pretty fun in Battlegrounds, um, and it's pretty good in Cyrodiil too. It hits very hard, harder than any other Sork build. Um, this is the highest burst damage you're going to get of all the Sork builds because of the dual wield. However, it still doesn't have the feel of ranged Sork in Battlegrounds and Cyrodiil. So, that covering the builds, again, always 5 light, always 6 in pen, even with Rallying Cry, always 6 in pen. Always a reinforced chest, um, and pretty much always death dealer feet, unless you're doing 1v1 with this build, then you run Sea Serpent Coil. Now I'm going to get into the bread and butter, my favorite um, overall, and that would be the bow build. <clears throat> primarily, primarily, probably the Rally Cry one, to be honest, but Crafty Alfik, if somebody else has Rally Cry, um, if you don't have Rally Cry, you're playing by yourself, do this one, uh, the Rally cre Cry and Wretched Vitality. Now, I will... Uh, where is it? This one. Now, we, we already went over the gear and stuff, but um, again, all the mag max magic builds are like almost identical. You're just swapping out the weapon and you're spammable. So it's a very easy swap, always defending on back bar. Secondary option is infused. It's up to you. I prefer defending. Sharpen always on the front bar. Always arcane on jewelry and always magic. Uh, or excuse me, always uh, weapon damage. Now, I'll get into why I run all weapon damage. I am a Breton. These are my stats on the bow build. Completely unbuffed. <clears throat> As you can see, insane crit. When I'm fully buffed up, I get like 51% crit chance. Um, crit damage, 21%. A little bit low, but it's uh, still super strong. Really heavy hitting. Now, because I'm a Breton, I don't need any recovery and chance on jewelry. If you're a Dark Elf or a High Elf, that's totally fine. They're really good races too. Most Sorks would even argue they're the best races. You would probably need to go one recovery. If you're a Dark Elf or High Elf. If you're a Khajiit, that's fine as well. You're going to do even more crit damage. You'll have even more burst potential. However, you're going to be hurting on your sustain a little more, more than the others. So you're going to need at least one recovery as a Khajiit also. If you're not a Breton, High Elf, Dark Elf, or a Khajiit, I suggest you change your race because you're not playing Magsorg the right way, basically. You, you'll benefit heavily from one of the others. I highly suggest Breton for Cyrodiil and for Battlegrounds. I think Breton is just goaded. It's god tier race in Cyrodiil and Battlegrounds. It's really fucking strong. Now in 1v1, maybe um, High Elf or Dark Elf is slightly better. Um, I I wouldn't say like Khajiit is the best. It's probably the fourth best option for Sork right now. So overall. Now I did dual Monk and uh, Gromster. Uh, Lewis multiple times and even in Lewis's build mirror match same exact build versus each other I was actually doing a little more damage in my crits than Lewis was because I run all damage jewelry and I had some divine on um, Tipping the scale, but I learned that you want all in pen. You do not want to run divine and there is absolutely no reason to run well fitted on Sork if you run Wretch of Vitality on the back bar it is impossible to run out of stamina unless you're, you know, let's, uh, I'm not going to finish that sentence. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it uh, as for your imagination. You don't need any help with stamina. Okay, so we'll get into some footage real quick because I want to try and keep this as short as possible. Now, um, I guess we'll get into traditional Sork first, kind of like... Um, Lightning Staff. Uh, let's go with this one. Got a bunch of clips to go through. I'm going to speed this up because I got some better clips that I want to go through. So this is very Slags on his uh, Warden here. Now I, I think Slags is still kind of messing with Warden too. Um, so 
It's not the most impressive um, win here, but we'll speed it up real quick. Slags is a, is a great player, don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, I think overall, Sork uh, doesn't really lose to anybody except for Ranged Plar. Ranged Plar is the one class that has a chance to 100 to 0 Sork or just not die at all. And then, of course, Nightblade can 100 to 0 you with a really good combo setup. But to be honest, the Sork really has to kind of make a mistake and be silly in order to die to a Nightblade. So it's more on the Sork making a mistake than it is on the Nightblade playing really well. So as you hear here, we're going to finish off Slags. This is just a traditional Lightning Staff range Sork um, for 1v1s. And uh, it's... It's still very good. It's just so, so good right now. Um, we'll go with a melee build now. Now this, this one is uh, versus Lewis. And I'm using his build. So this, this is Lewis's two hand. Max magic. Uh, dizzy swing spammable executioner. 1v1 build. Rally cry essence thief. It's extremely good. Really, it's the highest damage output DPS for a Sork I've seen so far. These Dizzy Swings can hit upwards of 11, even 12k damage on crits. I've seen uh, 15... I even saw one 17k frag on this build. Um, curses sometimes can hit 12, 13k damage. All depends what you're fighting and whatnot. Um, but here we got uh, Iconic in a max magic mirror match i'm melee he's ranged um let's speed this up a little bit because this isn't the uh, real one that i even want to showcase to you but this build is just so much fun in 1v1 it's so strong um and we'll show we'll show that in a second here it has some serious 100 to zero uh potential <clears throat> All right, when do I kill this guy? Oh, here we go. Okay, now see, so this is the, this is what I really want. So this is, I'm using Lewis's build. This is his two-hand build. So he knows how to fight against it. He's been playing it for six months, and he's on a uh, <clears throat> heavy dot pressure kind of like Arcanist build that he's been working on, and. Uh, I managed to get a clean combo on him here and just do a ton of damage right away. <clears throat> Here's the Dawnbreaker frag and here comes the Executioner. Just super, super strong. Two-handed build is so good in 1v1. And we'll go into um, dual wield Max Magic Sork. This is Monk's build. Um, and with... Endless Fury spammable. I would suggest um, Mage's Wrath instead for Battlegrounds and Cyrodiil. Mage's Wrath is the uh, better choice for the AoE execute. But uh, we'll skip this towards the end here because I've got a bow. I really want to focus more on the bow. But so this is the, the dual wield BG. Now, I have played. Um, Actually, I'll save this comment for the end of the video, but this dual wield build has the highest burst potential uh, because it's just dual wield and dual wield has extra damage, you know, like has more damage than any other weapons in the game. But I've seen, um, again, I've seen some like 17k frags, uh, 30 and 0 in this BG. It's my first time That's playing it too. And I've been playing this build stream. live on stream a bit too. So you can see more of it if you go through my streams. Clip. And then the main bread and butter. The build I really want to focus on for uh, Max Magic Sork right now. Uh, oh, that's why I can't find it. It's in a different section. 
All right, let me pull this up for you, chat. Okay, my bad. Here we go. So now this this is the bow build. Focus aim spammable. Now I don't get the 30, 40 kills like I was getting on some of the dual wield builds. Um, but that's because I think I was mostly fighting some potatoes in the other BGs. And this is more of like people that actually know what they're doing. But I want to showcase this one because the bow adds so much survivability to this build on top of already being a super OP Sork with a really strong shield. Again, we are running Rally Cry on the uh, front bar here. Retro Vitality, back bar, Death Dealer's Feet, and Mighty Chudin. And um, this, is, this was live on stream yesterday, but I wanted to showcase this one because it's a really good example of the utility that Bo offers in Battlegrounds and in Cyrodiil. Now the the appeal to bow is actually the fact that the focus aim shoots in a banana uh, pattern. So because the focus aim arches into your target, as long as you're you know seven about seven feet away from your target or so, you can proc a frag, shoot a focus aim, and throw a frag, and they'll both hit at the exact same time. What? So if you go to your back bar. Put your Ellie sus on your target. Put a curse on the target. Bar swap. Do do a shield into a focus aim and uh, focus aim into a frag throw. The focus aim, the frag, the uh, curse, and then streaking right after. They all hit at like the exact same time within like one second. And the focus aims typically hit between seven and nine thousand damage i have seen some ten eleven thousand so it's it's similar to wrecking blow damage a little bit less than wrecking blow but the comfortability of shooting from range and better timing with curse and crystal frag so the uh the combination with bow is actually extremely nasty and it's it's just really really fun fun way to play Sork right now. This is by far my favorite way to play Max Magic Sork. Now I will um, I will say again whether you play two hand Sork dual wield Sork lightning staff Sork or bow Sork. I've tried them all. I've done about I want to say I've done about 25 to 30 battlegrounds now. And uh, I have died one time in about 25 to 30 battlegrounds, roughly, something right around there. I've only died one time on Sork in solo queue battlegrounds. And that was uh, just when I was messing around with dual wield for the first time. I had one BG where I died one time. That's it. That's how strong Mag Sork is right now. And... Uh, Typically, most of the games, I get between 20 and 30 kills on average. Something between 20 and 30. Sork is just, it's just so freaking good right now. Um, but, uh, you know, Nightblade is great right now also. You see a lot of Sorks and a lot of Nightblades out there playing by themselves. They have the best 1vx potential. Um, they have the best like solo feel of just doing things by yourself and not playing with anybody. They feel great. All right, let's turn volume on for the rest of this. We got some funny moments here. I want you guys to hear some good fights. We'll do some commenting in uh, some of these combos too. Now this is Irie Works. I didn't even realize that this was Irie Works at first. He kept running from me a lot, so I was giving him shit on stream for running from me and whatnot. He's running from me, dude. Like that, but uh, um, afterwards I real I realized who it was, and I don't blame him to be honest. Being an Arcanist versus Stork, um, the Arcanist doesn't really have a chance to kill 
a Sork that knows what he's doing. So, you know, I don't blame him for wanting to get away from me. Uh, I would have done the same thing. <clears throat> but you can see here, even with the focus aim having a cast time and whatnot, the uh, 1vx potential is just so good. Now this guy being a Sork vs. Sork, if he's um, confident in his playing, he should fight me in this 1v1, but... Um, they're, they're so brave to fight outnumbered, but they just instantly run away when you get a 1v1. Look at, the oh. mark, look at this Mark of the Worm <laughs> nuke right here. Now I see, I see that when I follow him into it... Oh, it was probably to join your team. You can see that it's red circle, so I know that I'm going to get a Mark of the Worm they're, here. They're so brave but I didn't expect it to go at the exact time of my Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker, oh. Mark of the Worm, just <laughs> fucking <laughs> nuked everywhere. I killed my teammate too, but whatever, Dude, fuck him. <laughs> Now see, this this is the part where if you're gonna fight, you know, stick it out and fight. You wanna come in at me, drop your ult and whatnot, you stick out that fight, dude. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Ivoryworks is a good guy. No harm. No ill feelings towards him. But the, uh, the bow sork, it just has such incredible survivability and movement. So I, I catch that all four of them are up here. So I gotta figure out which one to try and work down first. The night blade looks like a good choice. Get him right there with a Dawnbreaker. See some uh, 11, even 12k frags in this BG. Now I do prioritize Dawnbreaker on this build over um, overload spammable. This build is so good in BGs, man. It's so much fun. I do have to, I do have to try. Uh, I, yeah, I'm so fast, and with the roll on the front bar, it's just like added survivability. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That matrix position is solid. All right, so that's our uh, bow sork um, build overall so it, again it is my favorite way to play right now but you can't go wrong with all the builds that i've showcased for you today sork is just so good right now it's it's actually insane uh probably too good to be honest with you but there is one last thing that i wanted to show you guys before we call this a video Same i just want to show you now. how yeah, powerful now, but... the focus aim combo is um fight him up here probably. out here in cyrodiil and whatnot the focus aim gets like insane range too. But now watch this guy that I hit. I throw a curse on him. Set up oil up too. Let's uh slow this down a little. Okay, so this guy right here. You see him blow up right there. Now originally 
I think that this guy gets blown up by a curse and a frag. But going back and watching it, he blows up before the curse even blows it. Like, the curse doesn't even proc. So watch, I do a... Endless Fury. Or Mage's Wrath, I mean. Throw the curse. Now it's just a lethal arrow. Or, excuse me, a, a focus aim. And a crystal frag. That's what hits him here. Uh, it, no, it's just a focus aim and, uh, excuse me, a focus aim and Mage's Wrath blow up. And it does 24k damage just for a focus aim and a, Chris, and a uh, Mage's Wrath. So, uh, two abilities. Focus aim is probably the smaller one. Mage's Wrath blows him up. And then Sunder and the uh, Shock Enchant is probably together right there. So, focus aim applies Sunder. Shock Enchant. 20 uh, with 23 24k damage from two abilities the curse didn't even blow up yet it still has 0.5 seconds you can see it uh, down here it's a little bit hidden but curse can hit harder than uh focus aim uh it, it it does hit harder than focus aim if it crit so the curse would have been another 10k ish on this guy so i mean uh, if I five point five seconds later, I would have hit this guy for thirty five k damage instead of you know twenty three twenty four k. So just the timing on bow once you get it down is absolutely absurd. It's so much freaking damage. But um, anyways, that's the build video, guys. A uh, little bit longer in this one because uh you know I just came back. I've been gone four months. Um, I will be back playing the game more, more videos, more streaming. I'll be going uh, live as much as possible as long as I'm feeling up to it. Um, you know, I do uh, still have my moments where I'm not feeling great, so I got to take some time off every now and then. But I will be back actively streaming and doing build videos again. Um, put a comment down below for the next build video you guys would like to see. And uh, whatever gets the most votes, I will build it, play it on stream, and then we'll do a build video for it. So appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, you guys have a great day. Peace out, everybody.